Um, all right. Um, thanks, uh, Leighton. Um, so I, I don't. I, I don't think I'm, I'm, the main presenters are really Jacob and Paul somewhere. Uh, but the general overview is that um, outsiders, we, uh, for those that don't know it, we are a research center really uh, that's focused on uh, uh, infectious disease, just like our name says, and um, uh, general in, generally in public health. Uh, the presentations today are focused more on one, on two, actually three program areas. Uh, one is our HIV program intervention, where we're working very closely with the Ministry of Health um, and uh, supported by CDC. And then the other presentation uh, will just sort of like Hello? a case study. The other presentation is just like a case study where uh, it will just take us through the some research uh, projects that were some, some, some of the research projects we're running. So now the department we're coming from is the strategic unit. Uh, the strategic unit is, is sti slightly young at this outsiders. So we're still in many ways still putting in processes, uh, trying to make sure that things work properly, that we can use uh, new tools and the like. So it'd be interesting that after the teams have presented, uh, we could sort of get some of your the views from some of your students. Uh, thanks. So, uh Good evening, everyone. Sorry about the technical glitch we had earlier, but um, I hope you can get me now. Yes, we can. Uh, All right, thanks. Uh, so as Elia mentioned, my name's uh, Paul Somwe. I'm a data manager at CIDERS. And um, I'll just run you through uh, two research studies that are currently uh, uh, ongoing at CIDERS. Um, uh, the hepatitis B healthcare a worker study and also the EJO study, which stands for Elton John Juveniles uh, Offenders Health Project. <clears throat> so the hepatitis B uh, healthcare worker study um, is a study being conducted in uh, Kalulushi. And the, the, aim of, the aim of this study is to kind of, um, it, it's a demonstration project that will involve uh, a baseline assessment development and uh, implementation of an HBV prevention and care package. Basically what this means is that um, uh, we, we have research assistants and research nurses um, going out into the field. And these are like the field being the health facilities in Kalulushi. And uh, they are getting uh, baseline data on, um, on uh, healthcare workers and healthcare workers being uh, doctors, uh, nurses, um, pharmacist, um, environmental technology, and so on and so forth. Uh, we are going to collect uh, baseline data and also baseline samples, uh, samples being our uh, blood. And um, these uh, uh, blood samples are then sent to the lab and uh, tested for the hepatitis B uh, virus. <coughs> so uh, the funders of this uh, study are University of Oxford. And um, uh, like I mentioned earlier, um, the project was delivered and is still being delivered actually in Kalulushi. Uh, it was um, uh, done, uh, it started after, uh, of course, after all the permissions were obtained. Uh, by permissions, we mean the eth ethical approvals uh, and, and the like. Uh, then uh, of course, what happened uh, after ethical approval was obtained, um, we had to have some buy-in from the district authority, uh, being the uh, provincial health office in the Copper Belt. Uh, and, and, and after that, um, the study uh, started. So basically, we'll have some sort of before and after evaluation. So we'll have, uh, after the tests are conducted on hepatitis B, we'll have um, more like an, a, an estimation of how many healthcare workers are infected with hepatitis B. And uh, based on that, uh, certain interventions will have to uh, uh, happen. So by the interventions, um, basically we mean, um, uh, depending on the category of individuals uh, uh, that are tested, they will fall into like uh, three um, uh, categories. So there's the first category where we have uh, uh, people who are not immune, immune and basically are at risk to hepatitis B infection. 
So when you test the sample, the idea is first you're going to test for uh, whether there's hepatitis B uh, in that person, but also you also want to see if there's any evidence of some antibodies. So if you find that someone has antibodies, it's most likely that they got infected with uh, hepatitis B uh, sometime in the past. Yeah, so then uh, of course the other point is there is exposed and, and immune. So basically for these uh, category of individuals, uh, these are the ones that are actually infected with uh, hepatitis B. And uh, basically, um, uh, ah, sorry, uh, let me get that point back. These are the ones who are actually at risk of getting hepatitis B. And basically, all we're trying to do for that target population is to have some protective messaging. Yeah. Then the other point is uh, the ones that are actually exposed with a chronic hepatitis B infection. So the, the idea of these is to kind of uh, link them to HBV care and also treatment, uh, and also just have some pro personal protective messaging in terms of how they should conduct themselves uh, in order that the virus is not spread to, to other, others around, other people around them. So the second study is the Elton John uh, Juven Juvenile Offenders Health Project. So uh, basically the, this study's aim was to kind of gain an understanding of the burden of TB in um, prison facilities in Zambia. Okay, so basically what was being done in this study is that um, uh, we have uh, people coming into these prisons or going into these prisons but at the same time, there's already people existing uh, in those prisons. And what happens is that um, uh, all prisoners are screened uh, for, for TB as well as HIV and any and other uh, HIV related illnesses. So this project uh, was funded by the Elton John AIDS Foundation, AJAF. And uh, basically the study design uh, involved uh, quantitative analysis of primary cross-sectional data so this data is collected as part of the impact evaluation of the project. So basically this is um, data on HIV status, um, data on TB diagnosis and uh, data on different types of TB diagnostic tests, uh, being, this being the expert test, I don't know if you've heard of that, uh, or smear microscopy. So these uh, devices are used to identify uh, the bacteria that causes TB. Uh, um, uh, this, this data was actually collected in 14 correctional facilities here in Zambia. And um, periodically, uh, depending on av av availability of funds, inmates are also mass screened for TB. Yeah, uh, but they can opt out of HIV testing and the like. Yeah. Then uh, routinely, all inmates entering the correctional facility are also screened for TB. So basically, uh, the Elton John uh, Juvenile Offenders Health Project kind of made use of the already existing uh, screening uh, activities that uh, go on at these uh, correction of facilities. So we can now move on to the data collection tools and uh, analysis tools that were used. So for, the, for both projects, uh, we used DHIS2, uh, DHIS2 being District Health uh, Information uh, Software Tool. And basically, this is a platform that we use to uh, create customized electronic data collection tools and um, based on case report forms or uh, paper-based questionnaires. So uh, in DHIS2, there are two types of uh, programs you can actually create. There's what they call a tracker capture program and an event capture program. The difference between the two is that the tracker capture program um, allows you to capture log longitudinal data and uh, the event capture program uh, allows you to capture once off data. So basically, if you're following up individuals, um, maybe over a length of two years uh, and collecting different uh, types of data at different time points, it, it would be best to use the tracker capture program. But for the event capture program, uh, it's only when uh, or recommended to create an event capture program if you're collecting data once off, uh, like in a survey of some sort. And uh, of course, this data are stored in a relational uh, PostgreSQL database. And um, 
So basically DHI is to uh, the front end uh, interface, uh, whatever you enter in that interface and save is stored in a PostgreSQL server database. This is an open source database, uh, easily downloadable online and um, relatively, relatively easy to set up. Um, uh, the other point, uh, as you can see there, is that uh, at times, um, just for data cleaning, uh, we would export data in MS SQL Server. Yeah. Then um, uh, once data is entered into these systems, uh, we, we use SQL queries to generate uh, various error or verification reports. Uh, these reports are used to resolve data discrepancies and or inconsistencies. So what happens is that uh, we know basically for the two different types of research projects, we do know uh, what the data needs are and what quality data should look like. So what we do is based on uh, the criteria for data quality, we write uh, various SQL uh, queries that check for certain issues that don't make sense or bad data. Ideally, you would want to, not ideally, uh, most likely what we usually do is we, uh, when creating these uh, programs, we ensure that we uh, incorporate as much validation uh, features as possible. Uh, but sometimes, you know, it's not all, always that the system is 100% perfect. So there's sometimes when we have these loopholes and uh, these SQL queries come into play to help us resolve uh, data discrepancies. <clears throat> so for analysis, so I talked about the data collection tool used, and that's DHIS2, uh, which we customize. But for analysis, uh, we use uh, Stata 15. Uh, I think most of you are familiar with this statistical package. Uh, basically with Stata 15, uh, what we do with the data, depending on the research questions we're trying to answer, we uh, uh, code uh, frequency distributions just to kind of see uh, various counts of different uh, variables. Then uh, we also um, uh, compute chi-squared tests of association. So basically we have various uh, variables, categorical variables, continuous variables, uh, discrete variables. And basically what we try to do uh, is to investigate the strength of association is uh, for example, smoking associated with TB is overcrowding in a, in a, in a prison with uh, the risk of TB infection. Then of course, um, that is just some basic analysis then it gets a bit more, uh, not really complicated, but uh, for more complicated analysis, we do some crude effect estimates using the mantel hensel method. So basically, this is a method used to uh, find um, uh, various effect estimates. And in this case, I'm talking about the odds ratios. And um, the other point there uh, is that we also do uh, adjusted effect F estimates using the same mantel hensel method. So basically, uh, this is kind of, it builds to a point where you're coming up with your final uh, uh, model. And uh, we also uh, do like likelihood ratio tests and uh, logistic regression. So these uh, terms may sound a bit foreign. Uh, so I plan to kind of have a session just to run you through what exactly I'm talking about. Because um, I know when you're just reading text like this, sometimes it doesn't make uh, so much sense. Um, so basically, a general overview of what an analysis plan would look like uh, and this is exactly uh, what it would look like uh, what the screen you're seeing right now uh, basically you prepare an analysis plan and an analysis plan will involve various uh, cadres uh, cadres being um, public health specialists clinicians uh, data managers and the like and you'd sit down and come up with what you call show tables these show tables will have um, different types of uh, demographics and uh, and information that you're trying to present to to various people right then after you come up with a concrete analysis plan the next thing you, you do is you prepare the data and uh, if you recall i mentioned that we do some hefty data cleaning using sql server uh, queries and the like updates deletes and the like just to make sure that whatever is going to be eventually imported into stata uh, actually makes sense and can be analyzed immediately. Um, so then after uh, data preparation, the next step is uh, we, we, we now uh, uh, 
uh, compute crude measures of association between exposures of interest and also outcome. So if I can just pick on the hepatitis, uh, on the edge of project, uh, the one I just uh, ran you earlier, um, basically what we're trying to ascertain is whether overcrowding in a prison is associated with the risk of TB infection. Okay, so is it that if you go to a correctional facility and it's overcrowded, the risk of TB is high? Those are questions we'll be asking in step three. And we'll do basic uh, crude associations, right? Uh, and by crude, we mean an adjusted. So basically, you and I both know, or some, might, some of you might not know that the association between an exposure and outcome cannot really be the, uh, cannot not really be present uh, and can only be due to some other factors. We know TB is caused by a bacteria called uh, mycobacteria tuberculosis. That bacteria causes TB. So if you are trying to ascertain an association between overcrowding and TB, you need to think of maybe other confounding factors that can uh, make that association valid, right? So after you do crude measures of association, your next step is to kind of um, do crude uh, measures of association between potential confounders and the outcome. Uh, and the next step after that would be to do adjusted associations. So I know this sounds a little bit uh, um, heavy on analysis, uh, and I was hoping uh, if we have time today, we can kind of run through uh, these steps quickly in Stata just to see exactly how this is done and how uh, results are interpreted. Uh, I think that was it for my slides. Uh, I don't know if the team has um, some questions before Jacob takes over. Thank you so much. Are we going to ask questions now or are we pause until later? I don't know what you prefer. All right, uh, maybe we can pause until uh, Jacob presents his slides. So I can stop sharing my, let me stop sharing my screen, then Jacob, you can take it up. As, as you're waiting, I suppose, somebody, I will ask this question again as we're waiting for Jacob. Um, I'm wondering why the cleaning up has to be done using a oh, echo. Using a, oh, can you get me? Yes, yeah, I can get you, Jacob. I'm guessing you're trying to share your screen right now, Jacob. And I think we just lost Jacob again. Oh, that's sad. Uh, maybe, Paul, you can do a demo. And then maybe by the time you're done, Jacob's uh, internet will have improved. OK. Uh, that's fine. Um, let me try. Um, oh, he's back online. Jacob, so, can you... So, uh, Paul, Paul, Paul yeah. go ahead with the demo. Uh, Jacob's internet connection is very bad. Just go ahead with the demo. All right. Sure. Okay. So let me share my screen. <clears throat> so uh, are you able to see my status screen yes we can uh, now i've never used it myself uh, so all i see is a black wind i don't know if that is okay. oh okay there's an application behind the scenes okay yeah Okay, okay, thanks very much, uh, Dr. P. So uh, basically, this is a, a, a stata window. I, I know some of you uh, on the call are familiar with, with stata, some not, but uh, 
all in all, it's good to learn one or two things from, from this. So um, what I'll, I'll attempt to do is, um, is just to do some basic analysis um, on the Agile data set. It's uh, still uh, under cleaning, uh, so I might skip uh, certain variables or not uh, mention certain variables because what I'll be using is sort of a dummy data set that I just uh, created. Um, so I'll start by importing the file. So you can either import uh, using this uh, menu right here, or you can uh, actually write the code to import the file into Stata. Okay, so I have a file here. It's an Excel file, as you can see. So I'll just say import first row as variable names. Uh, uh, basically, that's the data there. <clears throat> so, yeah. So we have the data in the in in the Stata environment. You can see on the right hand side, we have the columns, uh, column names. Okay. Uh, maybe what I can do is quickly maybe hit the browse, just for you to see what kind of data is being captured. So. Uh, you can see there's funny, um, there's an ID there, a screening number, a facility code, a date of birth, a calculated age, um, what else? There's sex in there, weight, height. So basically this is data collected uh, in what the core registers at the correctional facility. So basically during entry screening, someone is screened for TB. They'll get a sputum sample, okay? And they'll test it for TB using an expert machine or a smear microscopy. Um, HIV test, I think uh, most of us know there's the rapid test that's, uh, that, that, that's being uh, used widely in Zambia. There are also the HIV self-test kits nowadays. But I think here in this case, what was being used was a rapid test. So you test an image coming into the prison uh, for HIV as well. And you get uh, these various vitals and, and, and demographic information. And um, this also happens to people, like I, I, if you remember, there's a page, or there's a slide where I showed that there's also some mass screening that goes on. Uh, so basically mass screening will be for people currently uh, in the prisons who've been there for at least seven days. Entry screening is uh, for individuals who, are, who, are, uh, who have been recently sentenced to serve some, some sort of sentence in, in, in prison. And as they, as they go into the prison, uh, this uh, information is collected and these tests are done. So with that being said, um, so in the Stata environment, uh, Stata is quite easy to use. Uh, what uh, you usually would do normally is to just kind of explore what your variables are. So there's, uh, if I type in, for example, summarize, so summarize will basically show me the variable names and the number of observations. So basically the number of records for each variable, okay? So when you look at this, it shows different uh, counts for different variables. And it also attempts to calculate the mean uh, standard deviation, uh, the mean and the, uh, the max value here, right? So now you have to note that for example, these three, uh, is it two variables or three variables actually at the top here are uh, text kind of variables. So it, it, doesn't, it does not calculate a mean or a standard deviation for those, right? But it does that for maybe like the weight, you can see like weight here, it's showing that there's about 8,116 and the mean weight is 63 uh, kg. This is in kg, okay? And the standard deviation we have it there and the mean weight in terms of MIN is 20 and the max is 125. So basically, just a quick um, browse of what your data looks like. Uh, describe uh, basically tells us, um, describe basically tells us the types of, the data types of each variable. You could see that there are some string variables in there, some integer variables, a bytes and a double, all right? So that's just, we're just doing some exploration before we do anything um, uh, of significance. Uh, so, so maybe what we can start with is, uh, if I wanted to know uh, 
for example, the prevalence of TB or the number of TB infections, right? There is a variable here called expert, okay? Okay, so this, this variable basically stores uh, positive or negative values. So basically positive being the expert test yielded a positive TB result or the expert test yielded a negative TB result. So when I do a tab, for example, it will show me that um, there's 80 individuals, okay, that had a positive TB result and uh, 4,200 individuals that had a negative TB result. One thing we should note is that yeah, there is also some missing data in here. So if I add the command missing, it will show me that there's missing or unknown uh, values for about 3,985, right? Now, when you start uh, your analysis, what will usually happen is that you will do a lot of exploring. And sometimes you will have to um, generate reports uh, for various personnel to kind of verify and update and give you an updated data set that's much cleaner. So these are some of the things you could do in Stata, right? Same way as in, when you're using SQL, you can write various scripts to check for different uh, data inconsistencies. Uh, and for me, what I uh, prefer doing is that when I receive a data set, I don't like changing it. I would rather create my own uh, variables and then um, work with my own variables. Okay, so like, for example, in this case, uh, when I'm looking at this expert uh, result variable, I can easily change it so that it shows me the actual text of positive and negative. And this is some of the basic data management you do in Stata. I, I'm hoping this is interesting, but at the same time, as simple as it looks, it, 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 it's kind of helpful. So I would create a variable called TB, uh, generate TB. Um, Let's see, maybe generate TB. Then I will assign um, the, var the variables from expert result. The values, I mean, <clears throat> from expert result. Okay, so once I've done that, I would say, okay, let me find some labels so that the va va values have some meaning, right? Like for us to easily read what we're doing. Um, label, label define um, TB table where one represents, maybe start with zero, represents a negative, and one represents uh, a positive uh, TB test, right? Then, what I can do here is say label values um, TB and TB uh, label, right? So when I do a tab on TB, it actually tells me how many are positive, how many are negative, but remember, Behind this masking, the actual values are zeros and ones. And uh, uh, Stata actually does uh, uh, follow that convention. Like you have to, uh, each time you're trying to do, um, for example, logistic regression, you should, be cl you should clearly specify which one is a positive, which is a one, and which one is a negative for an outcome variable, right? So let's say if I wanted to see whether there's an association between HIV and TB, so in here, we do have a TB and HIV variable, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So this HIV variable is, um, let me just take a look at it. It's also coded as one and zero. Let me quickly change it. Just quickly change it to say HIV. Okay. So what I can do is I can just say, use the same TB label. I will say, um, values, and then say, um, 
TV label just to make use of the same symbol it gives us. All right, yeah, so this, uh, uh, those simple commands basically tell me that there's about uh, a thousand uh, positive TB uh, 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 patients or uh, inmates, sorry, and uh, about 6,000 who are negative. So let's say we wanted to um, see whether there's an association between HIV and TB. How would we go about doing that, right? right. Um, Remember, these are just basic steps. Um, there's a lot that has to go in before you actually start doing this. So for example, I would say MH odds. So basically I want to see what the odds of TB are if you're HIV, if you're an HIV infected inmate, okay? So you would say MH odds. Um, so TB, I remember we created a variable called TB. Then, um, I will use uh, HIV test result, okay? Uh, and say maybe do that. Okay, so uh, so basically what we've done here is uh, we have an odds ratio, okay? So now remember this odds ratio basically tells us that uh, inmates, who are HIV infected are three times at risk of getting TB, three times more at risk of getting TB in comparison to inmates who are HIV uh, negative, okay? Then we have a chi-squared test there, that's a, a story for another day, but we also have a p-value which is significant. It's 0 0.05, and we also have a confidence interval. Basically, this interval tells us uh, how confident, uh, give us 95% confidence that this odds ratio is between 1.9 and 5, and it does not include 1. So this means that the crude odds ratio calculated here is actually significant. Okay, so now you just go out and report this as it is. Uh, keep that in mind. You would have to, remember I mentioned things to do with confounders, right? So we know that being HIV positive in general, uh, you are at greater risk of getting TB if you're HIV positive. But remember that there are other underlying factors that might actually increase the odds or re reduce the odds. So that's when, you, I don't know if you've heard of terms of uh, like adjusting, you would have to adjust, for example, for age, for example, maybe the older you are, the higher at risk you are of getting TB. So you would adjust for things like age. Uh, again, you can also adjust for, for uh, variables like sex. Uh, some diseases are more common in men, some are more common in women and the like. So you'd adjust for, for, for such. So this will be some sort of iterative process where you kind of identify your confounders, which, will, which, will, which should have like three properties. And those properties being uh, a confounder should be associated with an outcome of interest. In this case, like HIV, it is very much associated with TB, okay? Then the confounder should be like associated or should be, uh, should be uh, associated with the risk factor of interest. In this case, for example, in, 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 in prisons, the risk factor of interest, uh, like, like I said earlier, is overcrowding. There might be a possibility that overcrowding can uh, increase your risk of, of HIV, okay? So once you do that, you, you identify various confounders and eventually you build what you what is called a final log logistic regression model, which will include all your confounder, confounding variables, your outcome of interest and your main exposure of interest. Um, that um, would take me more time to do. Uh, and uh, I, I would like to give Jacob an opportunity to also present his slides. But yeah, this is uh, just some basics in, in some of the stuff we do. Um, ideally, this code would be in what they call a do file, uh, which would do uh, various things. It, it, it would clean uh, the data, uh, produce various statistical analysis, and uh, you can actually turn it up a notch by having those uh, results uh, populated into an Excel spreadsheet. 
So yeah, I think for now, I, I feel I should end here. I uh, would need a more lengthy talk uh, just to kind of get to a final model for, for this, uh, for this uh, project. Thanks very much. Thank you so much for that. Uh, okay, so as, as maybe, for, just, uh, I, I don't think Jacob will be able to make it. Uh, well, how much time did we have? Uh, well, I think we can stretch it for 20, 30 more minutes, uh, including okay, questions. So maybe, so, so maybe what I could ask is that, uh, let's take questions for, for Stormway, because the, in, the first, uh, set of uh, slides we're just giving an overview for a programmatic activity so maybe we can take questions for Paul, um, Paul's presentation All right. the, the floor is open people if you have a question maybe you can ask 